Hello, I'm Dr. Ross Walker and welcome to The Checkup. I'd like to talk to you today about what is the true pandemic of the 21st century. It is not the coronavirus, it is diabetes. Now, diabetes is obviously the combination of diabetes and obesity. And I've got to make a point here that all modern diseases are genetic. Diabetes or diabetes is no different to that. Type 2 diabetes is due to the insulin resistance gene, which occurs in about 30% of Caucasians, 50% of Asians, and close to 100% of people with darker skin. Now, when you introduce that gene into Western society, that's when the trouble begins. So what happens if you have the insulin resistance gene is you have a greater tendency to diabetes, to high blood pressure, to cholesterol abnormalities where you have high triglyceride, low cholesterol. It's very easy to get fat around the belly and all of that leads to cardiovascular disease. It leads to obesity related cancers. It, really, it leads to fatty liver and also even gout. So all of these things are what we call metabolic diseases. And this is what we call the metabolic syndrome. So for many years, people have tried to find a solution to the greatest pandemic of the 21st century with medications, with surgical treatments. Uh, we now have a, a different forms of gastric bypass surgery for people to lose weight. And all of these things are partially successful. But recently, there's a study of just under 2,000 people in the New England Journal of Medicine who were obese but not diabetic, who were given a weekly injection of a treatment called semaglutide, otherwise known as Ozempic in Australia, a subcutaneous injection. It's quite painless. And that was shown over a 12-month period to give an average weight loss in people who also looked after themselves reasonably well of around 15 kilos. So it was highly successful, but here's the problem. Because it was so successful, now the world has run out of Ozempic. It's not so much the semaglutide the world's run out of, it's the injector cartridges to actually give yourself the injection. So there is at the moment a temporary shortage of this, but that should come back on board pretty soon. But the reality is I see in my own practice, a number of people, not a huge amount, but a number of people who have been successful by other mechanisms than using an injection or having surgery. And that's what we call eating less food, doing more exercise. And in fact, over the age of 50, weight loss is 80% take, uh, reducing your calories, 20% exercise. And basically you should cut back calories, cut back carbs, cut back alcohol, and make sure you have at least three to five hours a week of regular exercise. But the problem is the system is much more geared to sin than it is penance. And what I mean by that is if you go for a brisk half an hour walk, you burn 300 calories. If you have a small piece of chocolate cake, there's your 300 calories. But I say to everyone, the, the big decision in life is not to say, oh, for now, I'm going to be healthy, I'm going to do all the right things. No, it's about making 30, 40, 50, 60 small decisions every day that you see no acute benefit from. But if you keep doing those things, you'll find over months and months and months, they'll start to give you a benefit. That's the checkup. We'll talk to you next week.